want to choose it. It's a really, really tough one over and live with until probably December 2020. Connection is not the greatest. Um, hopefully I'll be able to broadcast this for you guys. With me this evening, Ben K. Thanks, Nick. Always a pleasure if not, to be with you. Just time before the I do apologize, guys. The teams. How do you think they match up, ben? It's fairly simple. If you look but at the let's teams, see how it goes. Right away that they're stronger. The outcome of this encounter will essentially be decided by the intensity the players bring to the pitch. Right, I am going to play South Africa Springboks versus Namibia. Got a decent lineup here for the Springboks. Um, all have played for South Africa at some stage in their career. So hopefully this will be an enjoyable game. Both teams ready for the kickoff. Let me ask you guys this. What is the most frustrating thing about Rugby 20 that you've encountered so since playing it? On the left. Ball Mine probably... I've got two, three kick. things that's really irritating In the crap touch. out of me. Um, one, be, be it graphics. Um, the second one, the AI, and thirdly, the stockiness of this bloody game. The players look so robotic. He needs to go wide. Ah. <laughs> See, Bismarck, traditional uh, handoff there from him. So, yeah. Off to a blinding start against fellow African nation Namibia. Now for the conversion. Just four minutes into this game, and the box could be up by at least seven points. There we go. Trying my best to, to make the Springbok team look as realistic as possible. Obviously they're not licensed in it's like we're going to grind them a little bit. Wonderful technique in that offload. Come on, give to Colby. Ah, did sidestep one there. Attacking options here for the number and Faf de Clerk. Look how stocky he is. You'll expect that from from a prop forward like Ox. He's keeping the ball in play. There we go. Huge opportunities on the wings. Now Combrunk. Rock forms. The defence really got their man there. Hmm. What shall we do? Let's try a miss. Pivot. Two to fifteen. Oh, it worked out brilliantly, actually. Damien Willems are in for for one of the better tries in this game. What do you guys think? Oh, <laughs> the gap just opened up. Great. <laughs> so, around about 15 minutes gone in this game. 14 0 to the Springboks. And I must say, I've scored one going? of the better tries in Rugby 20. How's it, Gary? Um, hope you're good. I'm doing pretty damn well. Um, or maybe not so well because of the unconfirmed or confirmed release date of Rugby Challenge 4. 
Um, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but for me, it means we, we are stuck with Rugby Challenge 3 and Rugby 20. Jimmy T could be just a, um, what, how do they call it? Um, somebody did tell me once what those release dates normally are, those pre-order dates. Um, but anyway, what it can be is it's just uh, a pr proposed uh, release date for for the website, um, or it could be the real deal. Um, I mean, I don't think uh, a website selling merchandise or games would give a date and then it's not true. Like, for instance, the last time they posted... Um, they said 26th of June, and in brackets they said unconfirmed date. Now, this time around, it does not show unconfirmed date. It just says um, pre-order release date is on the 31st of December. So that might just be it. I don't know. I honestly hope it's not the case. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it could be true. But we've had so many release dates that we don't know which one is true anymore. How do they give a date of December 2019 and change it to December 2020? Uh, yeah, Jimmy, <laughs> I think, yeah, it's just absolutely poor communication and marketing skills from from rugby challenge for developers um, true blue and wicked witch um, we know they're not very good at communicating with with the public oh dear and then um, yeah um, maybe they want to to add some stuff um, it's like I said a couple of uh, weeks ago I wonder how relevant um, the competitions will be in Rugby Challenge 4, be it that they want South Africa out of Super Rugby, and now we've got the Oetarua, um competition for New Zealand. They might add that. Maybe they could get the official licensing for that. Um, I think they'll probably be happy because they couldn't secure uh, Japan and, and Argentina for, for the game. So I don't think Super Rugby would have really um, made any sense if those two teams, the Sunwolves and uh, Juarez, were not licensed. And the possibility that they won't take part in Rugby or Super Rugby um, next year is a big possibility. We already know the Sunwolves are out and then the Jaguares said that they can't afford it after this whole COVID-19 disaster. Um, yeah, I hope all the South African teams are there as well. It's it's strange that they haven't given us any screenshots of it just yet. Um, it makes me makes me wonder. But now, with the release date being so far away, they could actually get us some um, really big licensing because I'm not sure how long the license um, lasts for, for Rugby 20, whether it's only a year uh, licensing or two years or... I don't know. I don't know how it works. But I guess if they release December, there could be a possibility that we could get um, some more licenses, I don't know. <laughs> I know, that's, I just talked a hell lot in, 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 a, in a question of, of minutes. But I'm so passionate. And then what do you guys think? That's what? In, in South Africa, we have to multiply that by 20. So we could be paying around about 2,000 Rand for, for a rugby game, which, which sounds insane. 
um, if it's not going to have all the competitions and licensing. I mean, I would pay that amount of money maybe for an EA game or or a 2K or a Konami and I would know that it would be pretty good. But now, <laughs> since it's True Blue and Wicked Witch, I might have my, my doubts there. Opportunity out wide. He really should get to the line now. They found a way to exploit the gaps in the defense. <laughs> South Africa's always welcome in Wales. Yeah, I don't know if they can if they will add South Africa to to the to the Pro 14. Because um, there's already so many teams that I don't think it's going to to be the best move for for rugby to to have such a big competition because we've got six major teams. Um, well, no, let's Ball's put it taken. four. Got four pass. teams that's going to go in run. there along with the Kings and the Cheetahs. So you're already looking at a at a pro 18 then. Space outside, but stay. The game's trying to cut that kind of stuff out. That is so um, Jimmy, which which no cricket purpose. game was that? Was that the Don Bradman one? I I think so. I've got it too. Um, just correct me if I'm wrong. Railing beneath the kick. And the ball will go into the uh, yeah. I also have it um so it's a full seven man line My my fiance bought it for me like when it basically came out that that time and it costs around about what forty forty pounds or forty dollars. And I played it a couple of times and I actually played a few games for for my gaming channel. Uh, a month or so ago and I can't enjoy it the graphics were pretty poor um, but to be fair to them it's it's been a while but I think Big Ant made Cricket 19 if I'm not if I'm not wrong and I think um, they've made a decent cricket game I haven't played it myself just yet and I wonder if if Big Ant would ever consider making a rugby game. Obviously, they're also not a big big company, so we could not expect too much from them uh, as far as as a lot of things. Yeah, I I heard it's it's pretty good. Um, a lot of my friends says um, that I should have get should have got it, but. I'm not really that into cricket as much as I'm into rugby. Um, for me, it's a lot like like the baseball games. It gets boring really quickly. I don't know. I might I might be wrong on that, but personally, I I find cricket cricket games in in general really boring. Um, I used to play cricket myself and enjoyed that. But definitely not playing it on on PS4. Time for some fresh legs. Yeah, they'll be looking for some impact off the bench. So the kicker all set for the conversion. So the score is actually not that big. I thought we could win by a lot more. No, that's gone too far left. Forty-three, no. <laughs> This is my biggest problem with rugby 20 in general. It's way too easy. Whether you're playing Namibia or Wales or the All Blacks, it just follows the same the same road. Going to use this time to make a replacement. Yeah, it sh it should be harder, um, Jimmy. I don't know. I actually played rugby challenge earlier tonight um, and adjusted the the sliders 
to to basically fool on everything except the uh, intercept passes and the injuries and your what um, there was another thing but everything else have been set to its highest level and it makes rugby challenge free a little bit more difficult than it actually is I don't know it's it's still it's still too easy as well but at least it's more competitive than than rugby 20 so hopefully rugby challenge for true blue and wicked witch has listened to the complaints from from rugby 20 but I highly doubt it because communication and and that sort of thing is not their speciality so I doubt that they actually read up on anything there how's the freaking challenges for, for rugby 20 this week only three things you have to do is score one try convert a penalty and then score at least one drop goal it's as if the challenges are getting easier by the day or they don't know what to to add anymore They should increase attacking and decrease defending because most games are three nil or seven nil. Um, Gary Bevan says this way we need a new window of rugby games. Yeah, we'll probably they are going to to give us a global rugby season. I don't know. Um, Gary, um, I haven't read up too much on that just yet, so I'm not sure what is going to happen there, but they are talking about a global global season. And then, let's see. This um, Gregory Grant asked, does Namibia have a team involved in the Curry Cup? Um, they actually did play in, in the Curry Cup a couple of seasons ago. And I think they do, do have a team in the first division, not the premier division. But they have never been really any good, um, Gregory. I don't know, Namibia rugby just does not seem to get going at all. Then Jimmy T says they should increase attacking and decrease defending because most games are 3 0, 7 0. Well, have you, have you tried adjusting the sliders, um, Jimmy? Because. Yeah, I don't want to give away too much on the games that I played because I'm actually going to publish it on on a weekend as part as my Otorua, um competition goes. But I had some pretty good scoring, although I was a little bit lenient towards the AI at times so that the game actually looks good when, when I publish it because... I mean, nobody's going to to watch it if if I win by say thirty to nil or twenty to nil or whatever the case is. But if you adjust those sliders and you play on pro, it it could be a little bit more difficult, I guess. But it's true the defense. If I have to defend Only at full at full. Uh, or how can I put it? Yeah, if I can tackle the way I should be tackling or defending, the AI will never score. That's true. Because they just, they just don't have a plan. They just take the ball up the whole time. It's just basically one player picking up the ball the whole time and going forward. Which is something they should look at. That's why I think if the set place is going to be in Rugby Challenge 4, they could let the AI use set place more often as well. It's just the danger that if, if we play the game long enough and we figure out the positioning of the set place, that it's also going to get uh, really predictable. 
got the full team here and in South Africa's got um, all international players that has already represented South Africa at some stage might not be the the current Springbok team though yeah and that's that's another thing that really frustrated me with rugby challenge free is that you that you just pass the ball to your wings the whole time pick and drive um, at least here you can do a set play which I really love um, I'm a big fan of the set plays in in rugby 20 it's it's really a pity that the graphics and the AI is so terrible in this game otherwise it could have been a really decent game oh dear <laughs> and then obviously the the kicking for me in in rugby challenge 3 the goal kicking way too easy um, the fact that that it uh, goes in slow motion it really really bugs me Gary Bevan says we need the following rules on rugby challenge 4 okay I'll be waiting for that um, Gary and then another thing that bugged me in in rugby challenge 3 is your your malls it just regardless of how dominant you are you you could never just maul the whole time through um, it always at some stage had to to stop and then the guy picking it up from so from the or the releasing the ball from the back just um, goes backwards instead of forward and then the same with with the mauls from from the AI you could just maybe set it to go sideways and they'll go the whole freaking time sideways regardless whether they're making ground or not Logan says hi Guru how's it going Logan it's going pretty pretty good personally but on on a rugby challenge level it's really going terrible with us um, I don't know if you if you saw the new release date I don't know if it is actually going to be the confirmed one but I mean it comes from from a website that that sells the game so I don't think they would give away um, false information and he decides to clear his lines with that kick Watson recovers the ball By yeah and and another thing is the the scrum off is hardly Stay. in position at any stage the you you Here's get the, the scrum off creation. available but you'll be you'll be standing at at first receiver while while the prop does oh, the scrum off's work I don't know, but what happened? There. Yeah, so Logan, the thing is, they they actually the gave a date on on their website the saying the pre-order date um, or the release date for for rugby challenge four will be December 2020 now. So yeah, Jimmy, I think, and yeah, I think it's it's things that that I hopefully they've they've uh, looked at and improved. I mean, it's been four years. I know Rugby Challenge One, Two, and Three has been similar. Um, not too many changes from the first game to the third game, but I mean, they definitely need to to have uh, a whole different lineup for for rugby challenge four yeah that is pretty annoying logan we we're stuck now with with rugby 20 and rugby challenge three nothing against um rugby challenge three it's just outdated and old and some of the rules are not up to date as well 
So it just makes for some frustrating play as well. And then not to even talk about rugby, rugby 20. I'm just playing it because I basically already played Rugby Challenge 3 today and was looking for something else to to stream tonight. I'll maybe do something else tomorrow night. Maybe um, do a what analysis of the Aterua. I don't know if you guys are so much up to date. So maybe we can bring you guys up to date um, on how good the teams are from the Otorua and who we think is going to win. I don't know if you might be, if you guys might be interested in something like that. Uh, Jimmy T says, I think it better be good now. Yeah. And, oh yeah, I, I didn't watch the screen. And Logan, have you seen the price on it? It's it's quite pricey, um, ninety nine dollars to to be exact. Oh, what just happened there? Then Jimmy T said, "I think the game mode will be good." Let's hope the game mode is going to be good. Basically, they need everything they had in Rugby Challenge Three. And then um, they need to improve the career mode. I felt the career mode was something that they really did not concentrate on in Rugby Challenge 3. Um, it was just so, so average. Then I don't like rugby when it plays are slow to the ruck. Yeah, that's, that's another thing, um, Gary. Your your players actually get there quick enough, but your your scrum off like takes forever, or your person who's going to play halfback is so bloody slow getting there. Um, I don't know. Maybe we are doing just something wrong because I know guys like Ben Jones, and then I know a couple of guys here in South Africa that's really good at the ruck. Um, they'll steal probably 9 out of 10 balls of mine, which is really frustrating because I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I've been playing it since 2016. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe they just got like flash fingers or something. Oh, okay, so Jimmy, you agree that we should do something like that then? Because... Um, I don't know if you guys saw my my videos on on the stars of of all the different teams from the Aterua, but I do have some some video clips that I can use for that. Um, I'll basically do it through through um, through the PlayStation 4 on Share Factory, um, so we can go forward and backwards all the time um, discussing the different teams and stuff and then what I'll do is I'll also get some stats from Super Rugby um, how they actually fared before before the the tournament got um, suspended and then and so forth but I'll do my homework quite decently because I like to be prepared when when I talk about stuff like that obviously because I'm from the southern hemisphere I need to to be up to date with every single um, competition in the Southern Hemisphere. Now this is a quite close game, but I just never feel like I'm in, in trouble of losing this game. Um, so yeah, although the score is pretty pretty low, I don't I don't feel that I might lose this at all. Might be wrong. Who knows? Ah no. Recycled out of contact for Combrink. There goes Combrink. <laughs> Felt he should have scored there. Let's do a misspivot to the 15 again. See if we can make it work this time. 
Excellent offload. Ah, no, the not this time. The ball in and Let's try ball dummy switch pop. It's just frustrating because my. Um, oh, there's a good try. My button, my um, left di oh, down direction button is not working. So it gets stuck. So I can't do the bottom one. Oh, that was a good one. Seven. Mm, Gary Bevan says, um, what would be good for Rugby Challenge would be a summer tour. Yeah, I've, I think they should bring in something like that, tour matches, um, where you can actually go and tour um, or do a Grand Slam tour to Europe. Or you can do basically a a tour where you play club teams and and then go on to play test matches but obviously I don't think their budget really allows for stuff like that although it doesn't it wouldn't take too much to to do one thing that I did like in rugby challenge 3 was at the end of a competition that they actually show you lifting the trophy um, it's something that lacks oh, lacks here in in rugby 20 because you because you don't see a trophy being lifted and there's some there's some competitions that's bloody long like the top 14 uh, it's pretty long and you don't get to see them actually lifting a trophy at the end of that Right, so a 19-7 victory over England. Right, what should I play next? Let's do a Japan game. Oh no, wait, let's do a Georgia Italy game. Because I think it's not going to be long before Georgia actually gets better than Italy. I don't know what you guys' thoughts are on that. I think the next five years, Georgia is going to be better than Italy. Right, I think Jimmy T says, I think Northern Southern Hemisphere nations should play each other more often. They are usually the best games. Yeah, I agree with you, Jimmy, on that one. Um, that's what, what I think a global season will make a lot better is we will actually get to see the better teams play each other more often. Like, I mean, how often does Wales play New Zealand? And how often does Scotland play South Africa, for instance? So now it's time for this test match in what promises to be an epic battle. We right, have let's Georgia see who's going to win Italy this game. Like I say, guys, like I think Georgia is going to be Nick's better than Italy. Maybe the at the next World it Cup, who knows? I might be cheeky and say Georgia will be better than Italy well, at France 2023. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Yeah, I think you might be right. Georgia was only admitted to the international board in 1992. The country has dominated the Six Nations Second Division for some time now and is pressing its candidacy to participate in the major Six Nations tournament. Right. 
Right, let's see what's going to happen here. I feel sorry for Italy in a sense that um, the the government and the country don't really give a give a shit about rugby at all. Because I mean, there's there's spots in Italy that that doesn't even have a rugby club, which is which is madness here in South Africa. If you if you don't have a rugby club. In any town, for that matter, in in South Africa, then you are considered to to be a dead con or a dead town, like a ghost town or something. Gary Bevan says we need more teams in the World Cup. Yeah, that's that's a that's a big debate, Gary. Um, I don't know how good it is for for teams like say Namibia and and uh, who else is there Russia to to get hammered by by big margins. I don't know how that how that can be good for for any team's moral. Um, say for instance, okay, I, under I I know the scores at Japan wasn't that big between South Africa, New Zealand and Namibia and so on but you had to consider the weather was really humid the ball was slippery and it could have really ended bad for, for all of those teams involved um, it could have been hundreds maybe yeah some of those games could have ended up in the hundreds and I don't see how how that can can make for any good watching because I normally don't watch those games because I find it really annoying when one team runs away with a game. But then then again you get you get uh, a scenario like for instance Uruguay beating Fiji. Um, that was that was something amazing. I remember the first World Cup. I think Canada was no, no, that was Canada was quite a strong rugby nation, weren't they back then? If I'm correct, I know there was there was one case where I think Canada actually played in the quarterfinals. Was that in '87 or 1991? Passes after the tackle to Mikko Tadza. The referee says and then remember what New Zealand did to Japan um, at the World Cup. Okay, Japan rugby has improved a lot over the years. Um, I would say they should rather concentrate on, on getting Fiji, Samoa and Tonga to be more competitive along with Uruguay and, and Georgia. Franklin Samuel says, hi Guru, how are you? I'm really good, uh, Franklin. Thanks, and you? So yeah, Gary, I think instead of increasing the, the, the teams at World Cup, um, I would rather let them play more international games a year against, against uh, bigger teams. What was that? 105 0. Which which score was that, Gary? Yeah, that's how to keep the ball alive. He caught that ball well, brilliantly positioned. He makes a pass. They're going to work hard for the ball. Because I do remember 1995, the All Blacks beat Japan by 145 to something. I don't know if it was no, can't remember. There's the tackle. Here's the rock being created. He passes it. I was actually what? I was still young when when 1995. I was six or seven years old. So I didn't give too much attention to to the World Cup that year, and it was hosted in South Africa, which which made me really. Um, aggravated because I don't know if South Africa will ever host another World Cup. Um, I think our best chance was with 2023 and we were robbed of that.
He's keeping the ball in play. So, so yeah. Um, I actually, I actually supported the All Blacks until 1999 or no, 2000. Um, I basically became a Springbok supporter when when I actually started to to know rugby a little bit more and actually um, developing some some thoughts and stuff. I just realised that how can I support a team? But I was always a shark supporter though, and. I just realized in 2000 that half of the Springbok team were, were consisting out of uh, Sharks players and yeah I just I felt I had to do the change there and then so I've been a Springbok supporter for around 20 years now and and I haven't looked back since then Look at that offload. Oh, come on. It's a rock. Italy will keep the ball. Allen makes a pass. That worked so well. Oh, it did. They clearly practiced you see, that move. The AI time. just have no it's plan at all that in this game. So frustrating. And that's it. The first half comes to its conclusion. They've got set plays in this game, but the AI just never uses it at uh, all. Or once in the blue moon, they would use a set play. It's a rock for Georgia. They've clearly worked on it. They're showing they can be very clinical. There we go. Great boost for their team. Not easy that handoff. They pile into the rock. Pass. Gorgadze is grabbed and throws it out to Gorgadze. That's advantage for Oh, Italy. come on. Have shown in recent encounters that they may have an edge over 95 Georgia. was a great no, cup. Yeah, I, I watched all the highlights and, and stuff, and Gary. Um, like I say, um, I was still too small to, to really... Uh, go and watch it in detail uh, my my parents or my father when I was done with school to to go and watch some games obviously I'm um, I'm situated in the middle of nowhere here in South Africa um, the closest rugby stadium is about 240 kilometers from here so you have to make uh, almost a, a weekend getaway if you want to go and watch a game in South so Africa or here by where I stay where well, obviously if you're staying at a place you can go and watch every single bloody game that's what I would have done if if I stayed in the city where uh, a rugby team were like the Sharks in Durban the closest stadium is the Cheetahs um, Bloemfontein so yeah, if if South Africa ever gets to host another World Cup, I'll definitely make sure that that I do go and watch um, some of the games. Probably not be able to watch every single one, but I'll try my best to to watch the most important ones. Like like for instance, the the British and Irish Lions next year. Um, I'm definitely going to go and watch the game in Soweto. It's about 600 and something kilometers or 700 kilometers from where I live. But I'll make a plan to get there. Because I think we're going to break some, some records there for the biggest um, attendance ever. Ah, you went to see Wales in Japan in 1995. So... Gary, you you basically from from South Africa then, but you're now living in Wales. Is that correct? Or are you a Welsh? Thick and thin. It's none other than Zani. And he fielded that kick really well. 
A great platform to attack from here, from this rock. He missed him. Ah, oh, the ball goes oh. into touch. They're going for a shortened line-out. Just three in the line. Oh, they got me there. Thrown in and in the hands of Georgia. Wonderful work guiding this mall. Ah, Italy slowly creeping back into this game. Italy have been stopped. They've been frustrated. Italy keep the ball. They're moving the ball well. Successful offload out of the tackle. Oh, come on, tackle. There we go. There's big gaps on the outside. And he's going to probably go all the way or not. Up the touchline, a great nah, run by Not going to happen. Let's do a loop. I'm from Wales and now I live in London. Ah, okay. So how's how's life in in London? Nariashvili might have some space on that side. The scrum half pulls the ball out. This is going to be a real struggle. Excellent defense. Oh, come on, offside. At the 75th minute mark, ball for Bud. Oh, he was Come excellent on. in that contest. They just pass to the, nice wing the, out to the wing and normally the struggles to get Italy. possession back. Yeah, hey, I've turned it over again. I felt oh, the rucks were a lot better before the last update. Before. Guys, remember, it? they made it really difficult and then... Then they actually decreased uh, the speed at which the AI steals the ball. Which made me so angry at the time because I felt that was one of, one of the better things they did was increasing the speed at which the AI comes to the ruck. And then they went and decreased it again and that's where we're stuck now. Where the AI isn't competitive at all. There we go. Finish them off. Another 19-5 victory. That's right, Nick. They were so tenacious and they got their reward with that try. Alright, there we go. So that's it. Okay, I'm from the same part of Wales as Andrew. Ah, oh, okay. They really put on a show. Absolutely. They just ran away with it in the end. Yep. That's nice. Magnificent. Ninety five. So I see Andrew has managed to get us two more big rugby players involved. Um, I've been struggling like like hell to to get South African players involved in in this campaign. Um, I've already messaged like over 200 uh, people and basically I had responses from three of them and basically it's just um, just asking what I want and when I tell them what we want they just don't respond at all which is really really annoying. So yeah, um, I'm glad that Andrew has been managing to, to get hold of more people. I'm just struggling really to, to get people involved because he uses the World Rugby Video Campaign um, Twitter account and I basically have to use my personal account. So it's a little bit more difficult for, for me to to get the people to to know that I'm actually part of the rugby video campaign which is frustrating in some sense but yeah I'm still waiting for some responses so hopefully I can get us some some rugby players from South Africa but what I did notice is that a lot of them are really arrogant um, some of them just don't want to to be contacted by by a normal person it seems which is really annoying but yeah guys um, we've done an hour I think of streaming tonight 
I actually have to go to bed earlier tonight. It's already 1 a.m. here in South Africa. So I'll probably have to say goodnight to you guys to, for tonight. So hope you guys enjoyed the stream. And in tomorrow night we will be doing a Oterua um, special um, to check out who's going to, to win this competition and who's the players we need to look out for and who's the young and upcoming stars of, of each team so I hope you guys will join me there for, for that analysis as well so until next time guys this is the Rugby Guru just for now